folks welcome to paisa paisa i am your host anubhav gupta b50 on twitter and my guest today is arun choudhary director and chief business officer at mirai asset capital markets india private limited we are going to talk about the stock markets about the new offering m stock and much more right after this short break hello 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 everybody it's been another great week on the ivm podcast network advertising is dead is back varun welcomes arjun vaidya founder of dr vaidya's on the first episode He talks about taking Ayurveda to urban Indians and imparts some marketing strategies. On Pesa Vesa, Anubhav talks to Shrehit Karkera, co-founder of Ditto Insurance and FinShots. They discuss the intricacies of the insurance process. On All Things Policy, the Takshashila folk break down the deep economic crisis taking place in Pakistan right now. On Cock and Bull, Cyrus Ayushi Shreyas and Abbas discuss the Prime Minister's call to put the national flag as a WhatsApp DP. And on the life manifesto, Zarina narrates the inspiring story of a blind man who handled his disability in an inspiring way. I'd like to remind you all about our merchandise once again. We got some amazing stuff out there with more coming soon. But go to the IBM Podcast website and check out our collection of T-shirts. You have to click on the shop tab, and we'll take you to our Partner Grow Ninety One's website. Do follow us on social media. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter please do tell a friend. Hey, you want somebody to talk to you shows about, right? So talk to them about them. Also, don't forget to rate us on any platforms you're listening to us on and remember you can check us out on YouTube. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week, Bode Lifestyle Small Case, Cap Gemini and Intel V Pro. Thank you so much for making this possible. And welcome back. Arun, welcome to Paisa Vaisa. Thank you so much for doing this for our listeners. Thank you for having me, Anupam. Great to have you here. So, first questions first for our listeners, right? Because it gets a little bit confusing. Tell us about Mire. You know, there is Mire Mutual Fund, which I'm sure a lot of our listeners are familiar with, and then there is Mire Asset Capital Markets. What's the difference? Just give us a backdrop. Of course. Uh, so, uh, Mire entered India in 2008. uh and the first step that we took took towards india was setting up the amc business which is what was till now referred to as mirai asset uh after the very successful stint of uh, 15 plus years what came into being was mirai asset capital markets in the year 2017 now the difference between the two entities is that mirai asset uh, investments is the mutual fund wing of the mirai asset global and mirai asset capital markets as the name itself suggests is into uh, multiple businesses we have in investment banking institutional broking our own prop book and the latest addition to this pack was m stock which is the retail broking proposition that we launched on the 11th of april so this essentially is the difference between the two entities 11th of april that's very recent so let's start arun what is m stock uh, you know lot of brokerages and some of them have come on our show recently we had uh, angel one we've had than lot of brokerages around are focusing on technology tell us what your journey was like so anupam the journey has been uh, a little short but the excitement was uh, quite a bit so we as we as i told you we launched on the 11th of april which is close to a little more than 90 days old now now uh, how are we different is what i would want to focus on in the beginning versus what you see today the industry is broken up into two parts one is the uh, uh, the regular traditional brokers who will charge brokerage in percentages and then we saw the advent of the last 5 to 6 years of discount brokers coming in with m stock we are very proud to launch a completely new segment which we refer to as zero broking so now how are we different is that once you pay the account opening fees everything beyond that at m stock is completely free and that is for life you don't have to pay any charges and that is not linked to any subscriptions there are no hidden charges there are no limits to time to age to number of orders it is completely free since the launch over the last 90 years we are very happy to inform that we've already been able to onboard more than 10000 clients we have already executed more than 3500 crore worth of total turnover on our platforms which is attributed to more than 1.5 million trades i think why such a enthusiastic start is because from the day one the business was absolutely focused on what the customers want whether it was the design of the platform whether it was design of the journeys within the platform whether it was customer service we 
try to ensure that we're able to give what our customers are looking for. And hence, some people call us simple. Some people call that you can add a lot of features, but we pride in saying that we offer the customers what they want. So that's how the journey has been. Very interesting. Small correction. I'm sure you meant 90 days there, Arun. Uh, yeah. It came as 90 years also. Of course, I would wish you hundreds of years of the business. Uh, oh. Let's get to the details, Arun. Let's, let's, let's talk about you know the specific pricing because i i like that you guys are very transparent there is a detailed youtube clip also which features you where you explain how the product is you've got you know model number a which is i think a flat charge and then if you want to demand so let's give our listeners an exact breakdown about the costing of your product because that's quite important and maybe you know let's talk about a few trades like say if i buy in cash and i'm looking at a one lakh order what would the cost work out to me let's go in detail there Absolutely, absolutely. And now let me pick it up from the video which I had done and probably we can uh, uh, add a couple of details from there on itself. So the pricing actually is split into three parts for any broker, not only for us. One is the account opening charge. Second is the charge that the users have to pay for the towards the DMAT uh, maintenance. And the third one are the government levies. Now these are three parts that we split it in. At MStock, when you open an account, you have two options with you. You either choose the flagship orientation that we carry, which is the 999 account, or you can choose the 149 account as well. Now, how are they two different? When you open a 999 account, all the trades across all the products that we have live on the platform are completely free and that's for life. A lot of people have actually come back to me saying that, boss, is there something hidden behind life as well? I said, boss, that's your life and my life both. <laughs> so it's completely free there. On the other account, and that was specially created for people who said, let me try you out first before I move everything to you. We had a 149 account opening fee as well, where when you open an account with 149, you have to pay 20 rupees per executed order. But even in the 149 account, all your transaction, whether it is for delivery, for mutual funds, for IPO, continue to be completely free for life as well. Now that's for the account opening part. Let me add a cherry on the cake now. Now, in terms of the DMAT as well, we've got a very exciting offer for the users. Now, in addition to the account opening fees, if you give me one more 999, now let me add these two numbers up. So you open an account with 999, plus you give me one more 999, which makes it 1998 of DP maintenance. Then I will also ensure that your DP charges are being made free for life. So with as low as 1998, the account that you open with me, becomes completely free from any charges the users will be charged over their lifetime. Of course, in addition to this, there are government levies and a small payment partner fees, which is, of course, what we pass on to uh, uh, the regulators and the partners that we work with. The last part are the statutory levies. And why I want to talk about this is a lot of people confused saying that, boss, are they also zero? See, these are charges which are being taken by us and passed on to the respective regulators in lieu of the transactions that the customers execute on our platform. So here also, we've tried to be as comparative as possible. Just to give you a couple of examples, for example, pledge in our case is at about rupees 12. When you sell a stock from your DP, that transaction is again uh, at 12. We don't charge anything for reactivation. We don't charge anything when you place a trade through our call center. We don't have any other hidden charges which will come to you as a surprise in your contract mode. So I know that's a lot of information, but I try to ensure that I explain every bit of it. And welcome back. Okay, Arun, you've given us this nice picture with some cherries on top also, as you said. Let's look at two specific transactions. Actually, first, let's start with cash. Let's just say that I'm doing a one lakh rupee. Actually, let's take one step back. So I come on your platform and I pay 999. Is there any 18% GST there or it's just flat 999? That's that's absolutely there. So 19,999 plus 18% GST plus about 2% payment partner fees is all you have to pay. Okay. So I pay that up and let's say that I still have my DMAT account. My DMAT is with whatever, an ICICI, Kota, IGFC, whoever, whatever, wherever. Yeah. And I put in an order of say 1 lakh rupees to buy, I don't know, 1000 shares of 100 rupees each. Yeah. What would the, and this is for delivery, by the way, this is not for, you know, in intraday, it's not for selling tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. It's just mm. that I want to buy and I want to hold. What would the process, what would the costing be like for me? So excellent, Anupam. What I will do is I will just extend this question to answer 
whether it is buying in delivery or in intraday or in futures or in options or in commodities or currencies commodities will be live with soon the charges are completely same you will actually end up paying rupees zero when it comes towards any brokerage being charged to you if you had opted for the 999 account it is completely zero so there is there is nothing beyond that and of course the government levies as per the standard charges which is standard for every broker is what you are being charged as now if you would have opened a 149 account now coming to answer a specific question and you would have done a delivery transaction of 1 lakh the charges in terms of brokerage would still have been zero okay so i don't charge anything for delivery or for mutual fund of ipo irrespective of the kind of account that you open with me and also to add uh, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to uh, clarify even more a lot of people came back saying that we've noticed a lot of competitors you have come in create this offer and then after a couple of months they shifted back to a charge i'm also clarifying that this is not any kind of a introductory offer that mirai is launching this is the kind of business that we want to get into this is the new kind of segment that we want to open up to everyone very interesting i don't you spoke of some levies probably exchange charges and i know there is something called stt there is something called turnover tax there is something called stamp duty so all of these charges are also there which are part of every transaction al- almost every right. transaction it again depends on whether you're doing an fndo or if you're you know there are some on which stt is charged there are some on which stt is not charged etc etc just a rough overview when i get the contract note from you you know if i see these charges i just want to get an idea of what these could be because like you said you're just you're just being you know you're, you're just passing this through from me to the exchanges or to whoever is a regulator or whoever is a person who's leaving that fee on you sure so actually i think the conversation will extend into a couple of hours if i end up explaining all of them <laughs> together so Let's try for everyone sure. simplicity we've created a website called as mstock.com where on the pricing page we've detailed them out but just to give you a number so that you understand on an average uh what are the charges being levied so close to about 12 to 14% are the total charges which the user pays which is when you execute a transaction the reason why i'm giving you a range and not an exact number because you rightly said that there are a couple of charges for example you don't pay a charge when you're selling something whereas there are some charges when you pay while you're buying a transaction or doing a transaction so that's why there is a range of but the total typically comes to about 12 to 14% uh, in terms of total charges that a user ends up paying yeah out of uh, brokerage i think since it's not there reduces the burden a lot i don't what are the specific features of m stock you know i mean essentially i'm asking you what do you offer that is different from other platforms i get the 999 uh, and the 999 plus 999 scheme that's great but anything else you want to talk about specific features for m stock that you think are truly unique as compared to other platforms oh i would i would uh, in fact pricing was the smallest uh, thing i wanted to talk about yeah. so i believe more than features uh, what the indian investors typically need are a couple of very important pillars when they are investing and i would categorize them as four things and let me talk and uh, link it to a terminology we call them the four s's one is stability speed security and simplicity i think that's something that we've ensured that when we are preparing for the last 8 to 9 months to launch m stock is something that we focused on so i think we did more work speaking to people in terms of what their expectation is because as a global house the orientation was that we wanted to set up global standards when we launch m stock we really wanted that the platform itself should be able to differentiate the service which is far more than price now if i want to talk about them individually now how does m stock give simplicity in a platforms see the platforms are being designed so the pricing usually attracts the traders first and then the newcomers follow so our orientation was that how do we create a platform which attracts the traders and investors alike and hence we ensured that all the journeys on our platform whether you transfer a fund or you have to buy a delivery transaction or you want to do an options trading or you want to see something in your watch list are not more than 2 to 3 clicks in holistic man so all you need to do is about three clicks second we ensure that the information that is available on the platform is very intuitive we've not gone behind having a lot of information stuffed on the landing pages and order pages which only one or two percent of the customers might end up executing 
we've added information which we personally believe and that's what we've tried to test with hundreds of customers that we spoke to before launching is very relevant for that individual step and hence i'm very happy to tell you and this is customer feedback that the ui that we've created which leads to experience is something that we really feel is going to delight the users in terms of stability and security now internationally uh, when you talk about mirai we have the capabilities of ensuring that we are able to execute more than 1 crore trades a day second we are able to handle almost about 90000 customers in the very same second we call it concurrency so and this is something that we've been doing for the last 25 years across 15 geographies anupam and that gives us a very strong point to start on a very different scale when it comes to technology so the orientation of the group is to ensure that we are able to set up global standards when it comes to technology it should not be a case where people come in and ask us are your platform stable of course there will be some trading troubles it is end of the day it's a machine that we are dealing with but the orientation is on a larger scheme of things how can i ensure that the technology is something that the people can really enjoy using that's a table stake that is not a concern point for the users so our global expertise our understanding of uh, uh, how technology infrastructures work really help us ensuring that we are able to give the kind of stability and speed people need last is the security bit of it the security bit of it i think that's something which is very important uh, uh, we've seen what covid did to the broking industry i think we are the happiest when it comes to the leverage that the industry got uh, with the number of investors zooming in and with that i think what was very important as a as a intermediary was to ensure that the customer's data is not sacrificed at any point in time and that's where we spent a lot of effort and money on we've got one of the best security analysts on board we work with one of the best agencies to ensure that at every point in time security is something that is given the highest concern so these four ss is something that our business is being formed on arun i want to ask you something since you mentioned about you know stability on high volume days on big days and we've seen this in the past it almost becomes like memes on social media systems freeze up now some of this is because of the software i think that is used to interact with the exchanges from the broker and some of it i mean what i'm trying to say is some of it is in the broker's hands and some of it is not in the broker's hands what's your view on this if you could explain to our listeners that how does this work why do terminals freeze why do systems freeze why do i as a trader or an investor have to pay the price of software glitches on huge volume days and we've seen those in the last couple of years so what what really happens what's the reality here <laughs> that's a tricky one so uh, see typically what happens is um, as i told you um, the broking industry went through a very different orientation when you speak of years 2020 march and onwards where everyone was in house everyone was looking how do you ensure that you save your bread and butter this industry actually went through a very different zoom i think what happened to us over the last two years was something which was unimaginable to a large extent i believe everyone was taken aback with the kind of volumes that you saw if you really notice the kind of uh, the number of events or the kind of events that you seen happening negatively in terms of technology is something that has started triggering a lot in the last about 2 to 1 and a half years because the volumes have shot through the roof and i think a lot of companies were actually caught unaware that these kind of volumes can hit so that i think is one fundamental reason why these things were happening second uh, uh, which i believe is actually the kind of data inputs that we put in so as a broker there is a lot of information that keeps traveling between the exchange me and the client and the entire orientation is how do i ensure that the live orientation is between main maintained between the exchanges and the client for this there are millions of data points that get pushed from one side to the other which is the exchange to the client and we act as intermediaries in pushing this multiple times due to this n number of handshakes that happen we have to ensure that the systems at every point are ready to take these kind of loads somewhere so the glitches typically are being spread sometimes it's an issue that happens between our connectivity with exchange sometimes it's an issue that happens between our connectivity with the client but if you look at the holistic architecture of this entire orientation is where the entire uh, grip lies and that's what we've tried to do as brokers to look at it from a macro perspective look at it from the perspective that tomorrow if my volumes increase 10 times 
what is the kind of orientation that i need to build build in do i need to get more servers do i need to ensure the security is being taken care of do i need to ensure the pipes which connect us and the exchange and the clients are being made uh, made wider and so on and so forth so i think a forward looking orientation when it comes to technology preparation and delivery to the client is something that everyone has now started working on and was one of the biggest reasons why these concerns used to happen that's good to know okay arun how important is zero brokerage you know to sustain a traders or an investors basically your customers interest in your product right because i've paid the money up front i'm done now from your perspective whether i trade or not it really doesn't matter to you but from my perspective and actually to to some extent from your perspective also you would want to, to handle me through a certain journey right because um if you're saying that stocks or equities should be part of a person's financial plan then you would want to be throughout the journey so how important is zero brokerage to the overall experience uh, that's an excellent question uh, again anupam so that reminds me of a nirma ad which used to come when i was young which used to say that yahi safedi aapko us bhav mein mile to aap wo kyun le ye na le so who is price uh, uh, not important to actually it's it's a very important factor when it comes to brokerages i think it's even more important there are two segments primarily that we divide the market into people who are investors so these are guys who will not do very frequent trading but end of the day they will come back to the markets create a portfolio over a longer time buy and sell and so on and so forth the other segment are the traders these are guys who will do multiple trades in the same day now i think the only thing that changes is the degree of the price impact whether it's a trader who's doing 20 or 50 or 100 trades a day or it's an investor who will do probably 2 to 3 trades a day end of the day you're paying a price for it and hence if i'm removing this barrier completely that orientation completely changes for example a trader the break even points actually come down or an investor so it's you should not look at only the price of the broker you should look at the amc that the user pays you should look at the charges that the intermediary uh, brokers like us collect for example i told you about pledge i told you about dp sell charges so there are multiple things that even an investor is bothered about so once if i take this hurdle completely out of your uh, 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 books when you're investing that actually takes a lot of chunk out that's one part of it now having said that pricing is important i don't think that's the only thing that people are today concerned about and they ideally should not be what is also very important is again the trust see this is the money that you're dealing with you're giving me your money for investments and hence i have to be trustworthy as an intermediary and that's what mirai as a global brand gives us second i feel what is even important is experience you don't want to be in a bus that has got hundreds of bumps at end of the day gives you a price which is cheap you want to ensure that your journey within the platform your journey when you i i don't think this should happen but you end up calling a call center that journey should be very simple that experience should be very nice so <coughs> excuse me so the price in addition to trust experience and then eventually as as i spoke of earlier uh, when we discussed the speed and stability of course from a trader or even an investor standpoint is something that makes the holistic decision point for an investor price of course right. is something that attracts a lot of users yeah so price trust experience let's talk about technology around how is that changing the user experience in a product like yours like mstock so i think uh, it's not only changing but it's driving the way uh, the transactions are happening whether financial or non financial i think that's becoming the base of our of how businesses are being built so i entered the uh, stock broking uh, fraternity about 15 16 years back and that was the time where opening an account is, itself used to be a week long process now uh, we pride in opening accounts in less than 5 minutes at mstock so that is one of the biggest change that i have seen second the reach that technology is today created so i was just traveling to delhi and happened to tra- travel to areas which were little far flung i was amazed to know how people in far flung villages are today taking on e-commerce website investment websites to trade to invest to buy clothes so that is what technology is created it's reached far flung areas and hence the participation as a country is increased third and i and i think this is what has changed the the face of uh, uh, brokers towards the customers is that the experience has now become more b to i we offer customers individual experience so with anupam my orientation is different my data points are different my journeys are different 
with arun the data points will com uh, completely be different probably you're a trader you need more data you need more features i'm an investor i need less of data but i need more details on a specific uh, data point so that is how technology has ensured that i'm able to deliver a b2i experience to individuals so i think better experience reach <clears throat> is something that technology has helped us create of course stability accuracy security is further uh, added through this yeah so what's your outlook going forward arun because a lot of people think that you know brokerages and trading accounts and demats yes, this is all bull market stuff you know market upar jata to sab log ghus jate hain now that the market actually has been coming off uh, since october last year things are kind of thoda thanda ho gaye but if you look at the long term you know what's your outlook on the growth of number of traders number of investors and general interest from um the public towards equities you look at it in terms of penetration or whichever metric that you track so i i uh, personally believe that uh, of course bull run gave us a number which uh, none of us being in the industry for such a long time had ever seen but being in a country with a population of 1.4 billion plus where we have more than 500 million pan cards i think we are still scratching the surface we are at at some uh, 9 crore plus a uh, uh, demat account so to say but if you look at the same numbers in west china has uh, with a very different population size 14% penetration us is at a staggering 50% plus penetration i think we will continue to grow at a rate of almost about 25 to 30% if you talk about next 4 to 5 years there will be blips you will see some months where the numbers are down some months where the numbers are up but i think india is aimed at becoming one of the super house or so to say power house in investing over the next 4 to 5 years and i don't have any doubt in seeing this this blip right. will keep coming but a overall larger number i think it's a very strong investment story that we are looking at when it uh, comes to a country like ours very interesting around let's wrap this up in a form of a checklist for our listeners who probably you know still don't have a brokerage account or are considering it looking out to open one what is your checklist of the top 3 or top 5 maybe top 10 features whatever you know that our listeners should look out for when they are opening a brokerage account so um, i might be a little biased here anupam i will speak a little <laughs> that's more okay, about that's okay that's uh, okay but i think uh, the proposition so i think why have a fear in your mind of how much will i be charged for x or y or z look at a pricing proposition that can eliminate that completely i think that's important not only from a m stock standpoint but also from a standpoint where the users have 100% clarity that's one second please ensure that you look at someone you can trust being your financial partner i think that's the most important point when you're looking at uh, partnering with an organization who is going to help you on your journey of wealth creation third of course this is something that you build over time but look at someone who can give you an experience that you remember i don't think there's anything more important than a platform that you would love to go to or a customer service that you will really enjoy speaking to and last which i feel is something which is going to become even more important with the time growing with technology intruding into our lives like anything is the security and stability piece please choose a partner who's able to ensure that there is stability which is something that you don't have to look out for every day please ensure that you choose a partner who gives you security so that you as an individual is safe your money is safe your data is safe i think these are four most important thing beyond any features that probably me as a broker can offer to any customer if you are able to find these four checklists uh, these point the four points which you can say that yes i have all of them i think you should just close your eyes and open an account yeah security is really important right everyone because brokerages are a product where typically the customer places a lot of trust in the broker and thankfully we've not had many we've had a few you know unsavory incidents that have happened um, in the last couple of weeks and sebi has caught on to that let's just you know just emphasize the security part because sometimes people who are not aware with how the stock market works you know sign power of attorneys some kind of random stuff just some warning points for our listeners on why security is so important in a brokerage account see uh, see there are a couple of points why security is most important number 1 uh, this is a financial relation that you are setting up with an organization so practically you are placing your hard earned money 
through which you buy any kind of investments, whether it is stocks, commodities, currencies, mutual fund, anything. So practically your bank account is with the broker and even the stocks that you bought is with the broker. Although in, in real sense, the money does not stay with the broker. It is in your bank account or the stocks don't stay with us. It is with CDSL or NSDL. But you have to have a partner who's able to ensure that your investments, both in terms of money and your investments otherwise, are kept, which is visible to you. You are aware of what exactly is happening. That's one. Second, when you transact with the platform, you share a lot of data of yours. So practically, when we do the KYC of the customers, we are able to get every data point of the individual. And hence, everyone should look out with a, of, for a partner who is able to ensure that the data of the customer is kept at a place where it's not accessible to even the organization that you're dealing with. Because practically you opened up everything. You opened up yeah. how much money do you have in your bank accounts, how many times do you transact, what shares do you carry, and it, it becomes a threat from that perspective. And lastly, of course, when you transact with the platform, you want to ensure that the transactions have, that you've done have gone through. There is no one at the back who's placing transactions on your behalf. So I would want to add, in fact, from the model itself, MStock, so my interest and the client interest starts getting aligned because unlike my uh, competitor partners, my business is not to get a client to trade more. My business is to ensure that I'm able to get a client onboarded and then I provide the services to ensure that I'm able to give the experience to the users. And hence, the alignment actually really goes well beyond the account opening. Yeah, folks. So please keep all of that in mind when you're considering opening a brokerage account. With that, that is a wrap on this episode of Vesa Vesa. My guest, Arun Chaudhary, Director and Chief Business Officer at Mirai Asset Capital Markets India Private Limited. Arun, thank you so much for doing this for our listeners. Thank you, Anupam. It was lovely chatting with you. And listeners, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Pesa Vesa. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are IBM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to reach out to me, I'm your host, Anupam Gupta, B50 on Twitter. And folks, thank you, really. Thank you so much for listening to Pesa Vesa. No material on the show should be considered as financial advice. The material on the show is for informational purposes only. Please consult a financial advisor before taking any investment decision.